Hi friends! Welcome back to another Pocky Art Journal spread. This is my color palette for today. It's very warm. It reminds me of fire a little bit. And we're just going to start with some collaging. I've got this sheet music. I just printed this actually off of, I think it was graphicsfairy.com. And it's kind of the peachy color on the card there that I want, so I'm going to use this side. And just tear it up. Graphics Fairy is a pretty good resource. You can get quite a few things for free that you can print off and, um, and use in your spreads. Most of it is uh, vintage kind of stuff, so if you like that look, I suggest you check that out. I'm not doing anything in particular with this. I kind of had an idea to do this as sort of rolling hills. And I'm taking a piece of scrapbook paper, and this has little gold stars on it, and I'm going to put that as kind of the sky. Ultimately, this doesn't turn out to be a landscape per se, but that's all right. This was just the idea I kind of went with when I started. I'm going to put some paint on the paper and this tool is something that I got to use with my Cricut. Um, it's kind of like a bone folder. I don't use my Cricut, it sits in the basement. I think I used it once to make Christmas ornaments with and then it just sat around doing nothing but I came across my little bone folder type dealie here and um, decided it would work pretty well for spreading paint around so why not? It's a little bit big actually for this size journal. A credit card would work just fine but I don't have any spare cards lying around. I did take some of the paint off here and there. I did want to see the stars and a little bit more of the uh, music notes. And here I'm adding this, well this color is um, called parchment. No, it's unbleached titanium, sorry, unbleached titanium. And I'm using it to dull some of these reds and oranges because this is the background. I had to make sure the paint was really dry for my next step. I'm taking my acrylic marker and I'm just putting some uh, it's kind of like outlining the shapes, I guess, a little bit on the bottom, adding some shadows, uh, any place where the color kind of changes. And so I'm adding a little bit of paint on there and then smearing it downward with my finger to make it look like drop shadows. And that page, it looks very random, but it looks better over on this side, you'll see. I used to make abstract acrylic paintings and I would do this with some of my shapes in there and it's a really neat effect. You can see how it kind of makes some of that, um, what is it, unbleached titanium, uh, some of those shapes stand out. I've made a lot of different kinds of art. If you watch my videos you'll notice that I don't have a specific style. I just kind of do whatever I feel like doing and it turns out however it turns out. And I've been doing art for a long time, more than 15 years, and I used to feel like a total failure as an artist because I never really found my style. Um, a lot of artists, particularly professional artists, will find one thing that they love to do or are really good at and that's what they'll do, that's what they'll create, that's what they sell. And I was never able to do that and so I felt like a big failure. 
And um, recently it occurred to me that, you know what, you don't have to have one thing. You really just don't. I can't do the same thing over and over again. I find it really boring. I like to do new things all the time. I find it exciting and that's what art is all about for me. So I just do whatever I feel like doing and it turns out however it turns out. And there's really nothing wrong with that. And honestly, with making videos, it keeps my videos from being predictable and boring. And I really think that somebody is going to like whatever I make, regardless of what style it is. They're not going to like every piece I make for sure, but they'll probably like something I make. I've got my dark red here and I'm adding some flower shapes in. And this is going to be my foreground. My little sheet of white paper there in the background. Um, I'm not sure if it's we got some paint underneath it or what, but it was sticking to the page. And I ended up having to go back uh, and touch up the spread that's on the other side because it did pull some of it off. It's not really necessarily a tragedy when this happens. It's certainly disappointing, but it really teaches you how to fix something if something goes wrong. So, it, you know, you develop some good skills there. And just adding leaves and making sure to keep the vein in the center open so it's not a complete block shape. It makes it look more like a leaf when it has a vein in it. It's a little hard to see what I'm doing in the foreground just because the background is very busy. But I will fix that as I go along. If you don't work with acrylic markers and paint pens, uh, typically you have to prime them by pushing the tip down into the pen. Um, that allows the paint inside to flow into the tip. So if you're using a paint pen either for the first time or if it starts to kind of dry out on you, prime the tip and then it'll work again. And here I'm taking a bright red and just adding some lines for interest and highlights. I didn't want to do a whole lot of detail in these shapes. And here I'm just adding little, little tiny squiggles. Um, the idea was to have kind of flowers or leaves or something coming from the top of the page. I really did not have a plan with these. I didn't quite know what I was going to do with them. And as you can see, I mean, the orange does show up, but it doesn't stand out against the background. So I ended up using quite a few colors trying to get them to come to the foreground. There was one point when I was doing these little squiggle shapes when I wasn't sure they were going to turn out and look like anything and I thought mm, I might have to paint over them. But I kept with it and in the end it turned out alright and you'll see how that comes about. I'm using a lot of colors in here just because it's, it was really hard to get it to pop away from the background. 
And here I'm taking some of that unbleached titanium again and using a baby wipe and trying to push the background more into the background so that those leaves at the top come forward. I do have several different sets of acrylic markers and between them I had quite a few oranges and peach colors and then that dark red. And I'm using my Stabilo pencil and adding drop shadows and again trying to push those foreground elements more into the foreground. And this is one of those things where you have to pick your light source and try to figure out where the shadows would be. And then just a little bit of water. Unfortunately, this didn't work quite as well as I wanted it to just because I had added so much black in the background. It's one of those things I didn't really think through when I was doing it. I just liked the effect of it at the time. I probably would have been better off using a dark brown instead of a black in the background. I do like the way the Stabilo pencil made the flowers pop off the page. But yeah, the top part is driving me crazy. This is a watercolor brush pen. And I'm using this just because I had a nice dark red color. That does help bring it forward a little bit. It still kind of looks like a mess though. So now I'm adding more light to it. I have quite a few peachy acrylic paint markers, but I don't have any peach in actual tubes of paint, which is odd. I like to use fluid acrylics and really you can't find peach in fluid acrylics. Mixing it is a pain and I avoid mixing colors a lot just because I'm lazy. So this is my solution for these leaf shapes at the top, the little squiggles, is I'm just adding branches and suddenly, yep, they're leaves, okay, now they make sense. I'm darkening the very top of the page just to kind of draw the line and make the picture stop. And this is a flying bird that I used um, with my archival ink and a stamp. Um, I took my Micron ink pen and just went over it because when you stamp things, especially on a page that's already a little warped, it doesn't fill in all the way. It's not as dark as you want it to be. So then I just fill it in with the Micron pen. And that way I get the shape I want, but I don't have to draw it by hand from scratch. Now it's getting lost in the background, of course, because of those black marks that I had made earlier. So I'm just taking my peach pen and going around it and then smearing it. And that sets it apart from the background. I 
And now I just have to add my word. I'm using these black letters. I, I really like these letters, I really do, but they, they're they not made well because the letter part underneath is not in the same spot on each one. So every time I use these, I know going in that my word is not going to be straight. In this case, it doesn't really make too much of a difference. It's hard to see now. I did use gold ink, but it's very light gold ink, so I'm going with my glitter pen and going over it. And now you can really see how the letters do not line up with each other. No matter what I do with these letters, they never line up. So I just have to be aware going in that it's going to be wonky. And there I added a shadow on one side of each letter. And I'm cutting this into a random shape rather than a square, just because the letters are wonky and it just looks more natural this way. I'm just darkening the edges with the Posca pen. I find I get more control over coloring the edge with the Posca marker than I do with using ink to do the edges. And I'm going to take one of my gelatos because the paper is white and nothing else in this picture is white. It stands out too much and it's too garish. So I'm just taking a little bit of this peach gelato and just kind of easing that color on a little bit. And now it's much more cohesive. And that's it. Another spread done. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.